Good morning children. I am your subject teacher for chemistry, Ms. Shonali Banerjee and we will be starting our lessons of class 6 chemistry through these learning videos. Children, you have been newly introduced with the subject as in class 5 you had a combined subject called science. So, Pay great attention to the classes which are being conducted for you. So, let's get started. Children, before starting with our lessons, let us first understand what is science? What do you mean by science? So, from the notes on which I am focusing here, you can see Science is a form of knowledge gained by careful observation and experimentation. What does this mean? It is some knowledge and how we acquired that knowledge by careful observation means observing something and not only observation we also perform some experiments to understand those observations. Next. Who are scientists? People who work for the development of science are called scientists. So those people who are constantly working for developing different theories, different ideas of science, they are called the scientist. Next topic you can see how do these scientists work? Every scientist or any work, not only scientist, any work which is performed by a person always involves some steps. For example, when your mother is cooking, have you ever noticed when she cooks? When your mother is cooking, does she take the whole vegetable and put it in the utensil for cooking? No, of course not. What she does? She first prepares herself. And how does she prepare herself? What are the steps? There also steps are involved. She washes the vegetables. Then she cuts them into smaller pieces. Makes arrangement for the spices which are used for the cooking purpose. And then she starts cooking on the flame. Isn't it? Similarly, our scientists also follow step by step process and this method is known as scientific method. Which method? The method or the step by step method which is performed by the scientist is known as the scientific method. You can see here what I have written. Scientists also follow step by step process and this method is known as the scientific method. Let us now understand the steps followed by scientist. The first step, identifying the problem. What is this step all about? This step involves the method to identify what the problem is. For this, the scientists observe the process or the object very carefully so that the problematic situation can be understood. The second step, collecting information about the process or object. After identifying the problem, the scientists collect more information about the process or object. From where do the scientists collect information? From books from experiments performed by them, etc. The third point, identifying trends in the observation. What does trends mean? Trends mean a general direction in which something is developing. That is, uh, you speak about fashion trends. Whenever the Durga Puja comes, you always tell the shopkeeper that show me the new fashion trends, isn't it? So, those are Trends. Identifying trends in the observations. 
After collecting the data, the scientist looks for any relationship, similarities and trends in the observations. He then generalizes those observations and trends. Such generalization is called hypothesis. Now, children, you can see I have written the definition of hypothesis in my notes. The general or broad statement given by the scientist from the observations and trends, this generalization is known as hypothesis. For example, you know the current situation the scientists are facing is about coronavirus. Now, to give a hypothesis, what will the scientists do? They will first see, for example, you see they are telling the symptoms of coronavirus are how? They are similar to cold and flu. So, they have naturally observed these trends and then they give a hypothesis. What is a hypothesis? It is a general statement given by the scientists. The fourth point, testing the hypothesis. This involves the truthfulness or correctness of the hypothesis and how this correctness or truthfulness is achieved by performing more tests and experiments. These experiments when their truthfulness and correctness is achieved this becomes a theory or a law. So, the hypothesis which can explain all the observed facts satisfactor satisfactorily is then called a theory or a law. Next comes application of the theory. The theory or the law so developed is then used to suggest, stimulate and direct further experiments. Means when a theory has been achieved that yes this is experimentally proved and a theory has been achieved, what is then? This theory is then applied. How it is applied? Many useful machines and materials are made on the basis of these theories put forward earlier. Now, let us understand the different branches of science. You can see on the notes which I am focusing, I have drawn a flow chart on the different branches of science. Science is divided into two main branches first of all. What are the two branches? Physical science and natural or life science. What do you mean by physical science? The science which deals with non-living world means it is not alive. The science which deals with non-living world. Natural or life science from the name only you can understand that it deals with the living world. Living world means anything which is living like plants, animals, all these things. Okay. Now, the second classification or the ne next subdivisions. Now, you can see from the flow chart that physical science is again subdivided into two branches that is physics and chemistry. Physics deals with inanimate matter and an energy. What is inanimate? It is non-living or which is not alive. So, uh, the study of heat, the study of light, all these energy forms are studied in physics. What is chemistry all about? It deals with the study of composition of matter. For example, air. We breathe in air. So, if we uh, try to see what is the composition of air, we see the different gases which is present, the water vapor is present. So, this is the or uh, what is the composition of air and all these things comes under chemistry. Now come to natural science or life science. What are the subdivisions of natural science or life science? Natural science or life science is subdivided into two, botany and zoology. 
botany deals with the study of plants that is the plant parts what are the plants involved how they function what are the parts of the plant all these things zoology deals with the study of animals and humans that is how is uh, what are the systems in animals like respiratory system not only in humans but in other animals like uh, rabbit frog all these things are also studied in zoology so these are the different branches of science this flow chart is nicely given in your book and should be learned in a very beautiful manner children now we will be going through the probable questions from the lesson we just now underwent before that the notebooks which you will be purchasing for writing these questions should be a practical copy which is the big size one not a small one okay that is one side white and one side ruled let us start with the questions the first question define science what is science we discussed it is a form of knowledge gained by careful observation and experimentation coming to the next question question number 2 define scientists who are considered to be the scientist the people who work for the development of science are considered as scientist next question question number 3 state the five steps involved in scientific method the first one is identifying the problem second one collecting information about the process or object identifying trends in the observations testing the hypothesis application of the theory next question question number 4 difference between physical and life science physical science deals with the non living world and life science from the word we can understand deals with the living world question number 5 differentiate between botany and zoology study of plants is considered to be botany and study of animals and humans comes under zoology the next question define hypothesis a general or broad statement given by scientist from the observations and trends is considered as an hypothesis and then what is a law the generalization which is believed to be truth concerning a natural phenomenon is called a law means a law is proved by different experiments and different observations it is proved but a hypothesis is not proved so law has been proved so you all will be writing this question answers in your class work copies thank you